This is the oldest golf clubhouse in the United States at Shinnecock Hills, New York, where the U.S. Open has returned for the first time in 90 years. It's about a mile from the Atlantic Ocean, but has many of the characteristics of a true seaside links, a British Open type of course, weather and all. And weather we had for the first round. A real New England nor'easter blew in, winds gusting to 30 and 40 miles an hour, a driving rain that sometimes blew horizontally, a wind chill factor that seeped into the bones, but still the round was played. And it was Bob Tway, a young touring pro out of Oklahoma, winner of the Westchester tournament just last week, who held steady all the way, making this par putt on 18 for the only even par round of the day. He was an impressive leader. Round two was entirely different. A warm sun glinted off the blonde hair and shark white teeth of Australia's Greg Norman as he took command with shots like this one, which almost went in the hole going up and coming back. Norman shot 68 to take the lead by three. But a familiar flamboyant figure was stalking the great white shark. Lee Trevino, twice winner of the title, most recently 15 years ago at Marion, checked in with this putt at the final hole. Lee also shot 68 and was paired with Norman for yesterday's third round. 31-year-old Norman against 46-year-old Trevino. Aussie against Tex-Mex. Quite a pairing. In the early going yesterday, Norman had a couple of chances to crumble, but he didn't. And then came this putt on the eighth hole for a birdie. Greg, who has been playing rock solid for many weeks now, was beginning to look like a winner with this one. Like a man who might sprint away from the rest of the field. Until they came to the 13th hole, a par four. Greg hit his only bad tee shot of the day into the long seaside rough on the right. An extremely firm shot was needed. And Greg hit it firm enough, all right. In fact, he caught it flush and sent it over the green and down the hill into some devilish berry bushes and long rock. This was the lie. And now there was an opening for Trevino in the mano a mano duel. He still trailed by three, but if he could just... And as you'll see, he did. A near-perfect shot that ended up close enough for an easy birdie three. The crowd roared for Lee. Then Norman had to play from the deep rough with a restricted backswing. He did as well as he could, but still the ball ran across the green and off into the short rough. It took three more to get down from there, and the three-stroke lead had disappeared. Meanwhile, Hal Sutton, the former PGA champion, had caught fire. This putt on 17 was typical of his play on the back nine. He toured it in 31 strokes, had a record tying 66 for the day, and tied Trevino for second when Lee bogeyed 18. So who will it be for the open title? Will it be Hal Sutton, the athletic son of a wealthy Louisiana family, winner of the PGA at age 25? Or will it be Lee Trevino in this springtime of the senior citizen in sport? He would be the oldest Open champion by more than three years. Or will it be Greg Norman, the personable Australian who steeled himself against a hostile crowd yesterday to hold onto his lead? Or will it be someone else? Sudden swings can happen at Shinnecock Hills. James Foolis won the Open here 90 years ago when John Shippen, the first black in the Open, took an 11 on the 13th hole. It'll take talent, thought, and character to win on this course today. But then, that's what the Open is about, to identify the best all-round player of them all. ABC Sports and the United States Golf Association invite you to the playing of the final round of the 86th U.S. Open Golf Championship. It will take place on the rolling ground beneath the historic clubhouse at Shinnecock Hills, Southampton, New York. If anyone ever tells you that they have a little beach house in Southampton, don't believe them. There are no little beach houses in Southampton. Plenty of big ones, though, sitting on the shore of the Atlantic Ocean. This is where the very rich come in the summer to relax and contemplate their good fortune. And this is where some of them come for golf, to the oldest golf clubhouse in America at Shinnecock Hills. On a normal Sunday, a handful of members would be strolling the course in quiet isolation. But not this Sunday. This Sunday, Shinnecock is the scene of the final round of the U.S. Open. 
Yesterday, the mood was not what one would usually see here. The gallery shouted hoarsely for Lee Trevino. A few, regrettably, shouted against Greg Norman. A place that prides itself on being far from the matting throng had a few of the matting throng right on the premises. But the golf has been splendid. The competition to her man loved the course. All of the competitors like it. And the large majority of the spectators are having a mannerly, wonderful time. Shinnecock Hills in Southampton are out near the in, uh, eastern tip of Long Island, New York, an island in the sea, really. And more specifically, the course lies between the Atlantic Ocean and Peconic Bay, a choice piece of real estate that has successfully resisted invasion for almost a century. Well, good afternoon. I'm Jim McKay reporting live, obviously, from Shinnecock Hills. Oh, Greg Norman. Is that a picture of... Dejection and resignation, I suppose. He started the day leading this championship. He's now five over par, six shots out of the lead. Let's take a break. Now we'll go up to the 18th to Al Trafford, who I'm sure is with a very happy Raymond Floyd. Yes, he is, Peter. You know, this was a horse race for most of the day, but this derby was not for three-year-olds. It seems it was for 43-year-olds. And if Ray Floyd can withstand the, the charge of the players remaining on the course, he will become the oldest U.S. Open champion. Raymond, uh, it, was it worth the wait more than 26 years as a professional? If I could only express it in words, it's... Uh, I haven't really had much chance to think about it yet, but it's, uh, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, I guess patience and hard work and waiting, <laughs> I guess it pays off. Raymond, we've had so many conversations this week, and we've talked about many things. Age was one of the things that we spoke about, how many more times you'd have a chance to win the U.S. Open. This would then have to be very special to think that as the clock is ticking out, you had it in you, you played, not like your age, but as a youngster again. I felt last night that, that truly this was it. If, uh, you know, I'd put myself in a position and if I couldn't handle it here, it was very likely that it wouldn't happen again. Uh, I, I had an awful lot of thoughts, uh, emotional like I am now as well. <clears throat> You'd think I could handle this better after 25 years. Uh, but realistically, I just felt that today I had to do it. It was uh, probably my last chance. Maybe not, but probably, and uh, I'm, I'm just tickled to death. Were you aware of how confusing a day it was, how tight things were, uh, all the players involved? Were you checking the scoreboard? Well, you can't help but check scoreboards. They're out there. Uh, they're very visible, uh, and you can't help but look. I've told myself a hundred times, don't worry about the scoreboard. Go play your game. Use your game plan. Do what you know you can do things will take care of themselves and you can't not look at the board you look up and there's a couple birdies and if you're not careful you'll go shooting at a flag that you know you shoot you shouldn't shoot at fortunately today I never deviated I, pl I played exactly the way I had uh, intended I hit uh, realistically I think I hit uh, two bad golf shots all day I played wonderful I didn't really putt well but I putted well enough and uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed. I don't know what I can say. Dave, final comment from you. Well, I just think uh, Raymond and Maria uh, tonight will have a, a moment of reflection about how long a path has been, how much that lady has meant to him. His career really took an upswing after he and Maria got married, and he's uh, quite a different guy and quite a different player. And and I tell you, I couldn't be happier if anybody else won. Raymond Floyd, congratulations. That's terrific. Where would you rank this one in the open juice scene? Well, it's one of the great ones. I think the most, emo well, it's been a couple of emotional ones, but the man over here on my left, 1980. when he won in 1980, and I'm walking back to the trucks after the show, and they're, they're yelling, Jack is back, Jack is yeah. back. I had to stop. And I still get chills thinking about that. And I know he does a little bit, too, or he wouldn't be human. I could see him getting chills in Augusta this year. <laughs> Didn't we all? So, as we say, it's been certainly one of the finest that we've seen since we started doing the United States Open back in 1966. A final look at the old clubhouse at Shinnecock Hills. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it by top flight golf balls and cannon clubs from Spalding, the winning distance combination. By Michelin, Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And by L.A. Beer from Anheuser-Busch, the cool way to kill a hot thirst. The U.S. Open was produced by Chuck Howard. 
and it was directed by Terry Jastro, Jim Jeanette, and Bob Goodrich. Our technical directors were Werner Gunther, Gary Larkin, Les Weiss, and Chet Mazarek. Our associate producers, Joel Feld, Jack Graham, and Ben Harvey. The associate directors, Rob Miner, Jeff Cohan, and Robert Cowan. Be sure to join us next Saturday for ABC's Wide World of Sports, featuring two undefeated welterweights, Mark Breland against John Munduga. Also, live from Eugene, Oregon, the U.S. Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Action begins at 4.30 Eastern and Pacific, 3.30 Central Time, next Saturday. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. So one more time, just in case you just got in from your round of golf, Ray Floyd on his 22nd attempt finally did it. He won the Open.